Before starting the engine, the pilot selects flaps down to reduce starting loads on the pump. Before the aircraft takes off, the pilot checks that the hydraulic system is in working order by raising and lowering the wing flaps. The wing flap indicator tells him that the flaps are working. The action is then reversed. The pilot selects flaps up. The flaps close. The flap selector lever is then returned to neutral. The radiator shutter is also operated by the hydraulic pump. But, as it has no cockpit indicator, a member of the ground crew checks the operation. The pilot leaves it in the down position for taxiing and takeoff. The pilot is now satisfied that his hydraulic system is in working order. On the undercarriage selector lever, a safety catch is fitted to prevent the undercarriage from being retracted accidentally. This should be freed before taking off. We're now high speed, low lift. The undercarriage retraction mechanism uh, was simplified after Typhoon and the Sabre engine was now beginning to perform well. The green lights remind the pilot that his undercarriage is still locked down. When the undercarriage is selected up, the mechanical lock which holds the undercarriage down is broken and the green indicator lights go out and red lights come on as the undercarriage retracts. Red warning lights are still on to tell the pilot that the undercarriage is neither locked up nor down. The undercarriage and tail wheel fully retract and the wheel doors close. The red lights go off indicating that the undercarriage and wheel doors are up. With the aircraft airborne, the pilot closes the radiator shutter for normal flight conditions. It may be lowered to cool the engine should it become overheated. We will now see the operation of the hydraulic system in landing. The radiator shutter has already been lowered in preparation. Before the undercarriage is dropped, the speed of the aircraft must be reduced to at least 200 miles per hour. If the undercarriage is lowered at a speed higher than this, the leg fairings are liable to be distorted. If for any reason the undercarriage has been dropped at an excessive airspeed, a retraction test should be made on landing to check that the leg fairings fit properly. If this is not done, it is possible that the fairings may be severely damaged during a subsequent flight, despite the fact that the undercarriage is locked up quite normally. The speed having been reduced, the undercarriage is selected down. And as it unlocks, the red lights come on, and remain on until both the main legs are locked down. The green lights appear as each unit is locked. Tailwheel, starboard leg, port leg. The red lights go out. The undercarriage is locked down. As an extra safety device, wing indicators come up to assure the pilot that his undercarriage is down and locked in position. The pilot selects flaps down. With the flaps fully down, the pilot returns the flap lever to the valve shut position. Otherwise, the flap pressure relief valve would relieve and the pressure from the hydraulic system would not be sufficient to operate the undercarriage should the occasion arise. We didn't have the um uh, problems that we'd already experienced on the, they had been ironed out on the typhoon. Here the pilot on takeoff selects undercarriage up. The undercarriage green lights go off and the red lights come on. The undercarriage retracts but the wheel doors remain down. The red lights stay on indicating trouble has developed. The pilot returns to ground to have the fault rectified. We'd have to carry out a retraction test on, on the ground
We, as Pound has told, are an engineer, and we... ...that explains what has occurred and hands over the aircraft to the maintenance crew. The locating of the fault is made easier if the pilot can give a clear picture of what has happened. You didn't meet ground staff who were actually servicing the aeroplane when something really went wrong with it, whether it had to have an engine change or something of that nature, you used to buy a craft for you at the time. Uh, between them and us, it was uh, all a matter of we're all doing the job. The rigger checks the air pressure, then the oil level. As both are satisfactory, he must look elsewhere for the fault. With the aircraft trestled, ready for a retraction test, check the electrical system. Partially retract the undercarriage in order to free the downlock micro switches operating the green lights. Now press the uplock micro switch in both wheel wells simultaneously. With the undercarriage lever in the up position, operate the hand pump. The wheel door should close, and on contact with the wheel door micro switches, the red lights in the cockpit should go out. The red lights go out. This shows that the undercarriage electrical system is working correctly. Having found the hydraulic and the electrical systems are functioning, pump down the wheel doors and undercarriage prior to checking the mechanical retracting gear. Check port and starboard separately. Remove wheel and retract undercarriage. We'd be talking to them, and you know, we'd be, they'd be outside their hut, we'd be outside ours. As you know, in the, you do a lot of hanging about, sitting out of the squadron, waiting to scramble, and all these sorts of things. It will be found that the majority of the mechanical working clearances can be checked without removing the fairing. The rigger notices that the stirrup and latch do not engage. Examination of the retracting jack reveals no override between the end of the jack and the stop collar. Thus, the undercarriage is prevented from fully retracting. The fault obviously lies here, since the undercarriage stirrups must lock up to allow the micro switches to operate the wheel door control valve. Adjustments must be made. First, lower the undercarriage. Undo this lock nut and slacken back the stop collar. Switch off the undercarriage lights in the cockpit and carry out a retraction test. This allows the undercarriage to retract without closing the wheel doors. The stirrup has engaged with the latch and the undercarriage is locked up. Having replaced the wheel, carry out a retraction test by means of the hand pump. Switch on the undercarriage indicator lights. And we found that the, our ground was wrong and they do their level best working day and night to fix what they thought the fault was. And nine times out of ten, they knew a damn sight more than we did of flying them. The wheel doors close. The red lights go out, proving the fault is rectified. In conjunction with these tests, it is always advisable to make constant reference to the aircraft handbook and be sure to sign up the 700 after each operation.